Howdy, AP Pregal. It's Miss Kasha. I am back, and guess what? I discovered, <laughs> um, sure enough, that this was changed to cosine um, when I went back and looked at stuff. Um, so good. I'm glad I'm not totally going crazy. Um, this was the answer that they left, that they stopped at. Um, so, cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was about to question everything I knew to be true, good, and holy. So, <laughs> um, luckily, it was a typo, and we figured that out. So, I'm now on to the third video of 312. We did the Pythagorean identity, then we manipulated that a little bit to get these inverse trig identities, which I think I have never really taught in pre-cal. I guess I don't know why, but it wasn't really a thing in, in here in Texas, or I just skipped it every year. I don't know. Uh, but I think it is important in, pre in, in calculus. And now we're going to get into the sum and difference um, and then the double angle identities. So I have notes on these also. Um, but what we can do... Well, so here we go. Keep in mind, AP will give you zero, absolutely positively zero formulas um, on the test. So you need to, if you need it, you need to have it memorized. Um, on this one, so for that, um, I would like to remember this one, the sine one. I like to remember it as sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And the cosine one, I like to remember cosine, cosine, sine, sine. But what I'll say is sine, cosine, cosine, sine with the same S-I-G-N. And I spell out the word sine because S-I-G-N and S-I-N-E are different things. Um, so notice, if it's a positive here, it, it corresponds with a positive there. If it's a negative, it corresponds with a negative. So it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine with the same S-I-G-N. And then the one, the other one, I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is a minus plus, which is, it means that the positive here corresponds with the negative there. And so, and the negative corresponds with the positive. So this is cosine, cosine, sine, sine with the opposite S-I-G-N is how I kind of, I kind of chant it out or something like that and kind of helps me remember that. So then what we did in my, um, when I was doing notes is I said, okay, well, sine of two theta would be the same thing as saying sine of theta plus theta, which then we can use that identity sine, cosine, the same SIGN cosine, well, okay, sometimes I'll, I'll write it the way that I, usually I go sine, cosine, cosine, sine with the same, and then I come write this next. And then the only angles I have are theta, so they all get theta. Well, notice sine times cosine and cosine times sine are equivalent things, and so this is two sine theta, cosine theta. And so this gives us one of our double angle identities, that sine of two theta equals two sine theta, cosine theta. The other one is the with cosine, so we'll do cosine, of 2 theta would be equal to cosine of theta plus theta. And the way that I remember the cosine one is cosine, cosine, sine, sine with the opposite SIGN. And then we have all the only angles that I have are theta. So theta, 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 theta. And this gives me cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And then we can use the big daddy. Uh, so this is one option. So here's this first one right here. And then I can say, well, cosine is equal to 1 minus sine squared minus another sine squared. So this, that's theta. This is this. Okay, so then that gives me um, 2 sine squared thetas, but they're negative. So it's 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Or I can come back to this one over here and say this is equal to cosine squared. Can you still see what I'm doing? I think you can. Minus 1 minus cosine squared because sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. The negative stays with the 1, this becomes positive, and I now have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, which is what they wrote right here. Okay, so sometimes the trick with this, the, the double angle identity with cosine, is knowing when to use which one of these three. Okay, so let's see what examples he gave us. Which of the following is equivalent? Okay, so what I see, I see 2 so it might be helpful. We could say let you, not me, let you equal, I think I'm funny, let you equal pi over 14. Um, and so then 2u would equal, um, well, pi over 7. And so this is 2 sine, I can write this as 2 sine u cosine u, which would be equal to sine of 2u. Um, and we just said 2u is pi over 7. So sine of pi over 7 is our correct answer. Um, sometimes these look scary, but they're really not so bad. So just, um, yeah, maybe write this out. I've also seen things where they'll say something like, but let's change this. If I had a, um, a 22 instead of just a 2, then what I have is this is 11 times 
two sine u cosine u. And so then this gives me this part right here becomes sine of two u. And so then it would become 11 sine two u. I hope that made sense. But anyway, the correct answer to the problem as written was this right here. Okay, the next one, the function is given by four cosine of two x, which of the following is equivalent. Um, so then it's going to be, well, k of x would be equal to four times. Um, we've got the, okay, so, well, so I've got three choices. So it's nice on this one to look back at my answer choices. I know this is wrong because this is the double angle for um, sine rule. And then it's not one minus two, um, the cosine squared part has to be positive. And then when you have both of them, they, it's, a, it's a minus. So I'm thinking it's this one, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, cosine of two theta could be written as two cosine squared x minus one. Did I say it's a theta and it's an x? I'm sorry, um, whatever. Uh, but try not to mix them. I see my kids do that sometimes. All of a sudden their problem will have both x and theta. So I try to use both because we see both, but you can't do them both in the same problem unless you're adding different weird angles, which we don't seem to do too often. Not with x and theta, um, and there we go. So that's the correct answer. Okay, which of the following is equivalent? Okay, so here's what I see. I see cosine, cosine, sine, sine, which cosine, cosine, sine, sine means cosine of the first angle um, and then the second angle with the opposite SIG in. So um, well, this is what? 2 over 16 plus 1 over 16 gives me 3 over 16, so cosine of 3 pi over 16. Oh, I ignored the pi, but I hope you know what I was thinking. Um, and there we go. Fun. And the last one in his notes, oh, this is fun. The, um, the coordinates are 512, which is the value of sine of 2 theta. Okay, so this is a 512, 512, 13 Pythagorean triple. Um, by the way, Years and years ago, I made my kids memorize uh, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Made them memorize these triples. Um, and I had a student named Liz Davis um, who would put them to song. So she she would do the London Bridge tune, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Um, so hopefully, anyway, if you know those, they show up all over the place. Um, okay, so what I would recommend in this problem is write it out and tell me what is sine of theta equal to, what is cosine of theta equal to. In the past, I would also make my kids tell me what tangent of theta is equal to because we did the tangent rules also. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, AP decided not to include tangent of 2 theta, but whatever. Um, okay, so sine is going to be 12 over 13. Cosine is going to be 5 over 13. So what's the value of sine of two theta? Well, sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta, which is two times sine of theta. We just wrote down right here. Cosine is five over 13. And so I see 10 times um, 12 is 120. 13 times squared is 169. Okay, and those were his notes. I'm not sure if he's going to have extra stuff. I definitely spent a lot more time in this unit than I think AP intended us to. But I think it can be tricky. So the more practice you do, the better. You can go look through some of my older videos on trig identities and see if that helps. Um, practice, practice, practice is the, only, is the only way to learn this. So good luck. Let me know how I can help you.